So let me just start. Uh, I'm an investor. I've done about 90 investments in about 40 companies. So okay. um, my belief is that the due diligence system is broken and we're not doing enough to fix it. It takes way too long and probably half the questions are not relevant. Okay, so let me put that down. Just from an entrepreneur's perspective, um, what kind of investor would be the right fit for you? Okay, so um, would I put that as um, investor philosophy or let me put that? I think uh, one of the interesting things, especially in this space, is investors have so many frameworks that are beautiful, well thought, uh, clean, set up in a boardroom somewhere kind of philosophies of life on geography, type of impact, type of model, etc. that they don't always match well with the messy world. And so I feel like having more investors that would have a little bit more of a flexible framework and then be very pragmatic about someone who just knows how to get stuff done in an environment might be a little more opportunistic. So I'm an angel and I think the biggest difficulty is the battle between value and valuation. Okay. And entrepreneurs are fixated on, you know, how much money are you going to give us? And our uh, we presume that we are more interested in what value are you going to add to the customer's life? The, uh, so let's call it the capital chain. Um, there's not enough interaction between the early stage and the working capital stage and the growth stage. I think investors should also be held to a timeline. So maybe 30 days at the most to either do it or not do it and not drag the... And, and not drag uh, for entrepreneurs for months on end and then not give a rational answer as to why you're not investing. The issue is uh, in this environment, in this legal environment with the kinds of instruments at our disposal which are very limited, there's uh, the, the complexity of the structuring process uh, takes, has in some, now we've, we've actually brought it down uh, thanks to our work with the Mentera team and it's, it's, ma it's totally manageable. Uh, some of you in the audience may have dealt with us in, <laughs> in previous uh, deals and you've seen that it's taken, you know, six months because the structuring process that becomes kind of a proxy for other discussions uh, that you haven't actually had and, uh, I mean, it's been very, very difficult, very challenging. I do think, though, that in terms of the term sheets, we can, we've talked about this already numerous times. The term sheets, we can boil those down. And actually, I'd love to eventually get some sort of a, um, a, uh, a term, a set of term options that are approved by a collective of us as impact investors as generally fair terms for the kinds of investment that we're doing at the early stage with the impact lens. So that would be great. The legal, the shareholder agreement is still going to be like 80 pages in another language. Yeah. Wait, can I, can I, I have to so I think you guys are just dreaming, so I just break some reality here. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to sit here and dream about this 30 days and stuff like that. So what 30 days? Are you talking about decision in 30 days? Are you talking about doing the whole deal in 30 no, days? I'm talking about a term sheet in 30 days. Totally reasonable. Yeah, okay. No, no, it's perfectly reasonable. So there are people who actually do term sheet in seven days because they're doing incredibly well. And then the people who are struggling, and people are struggling to understand the business. Right. So it's a two-way deal, right? I mean, exactly. if you are able to explain your business crisply, right. there are people who are smart and who understand it. But also, it's the wanting, do I want to do this deal, right? right. That's indecisiveness. Yeah. And the answer is definitely no in 30 days. If you don't get a yes or a no in 30 days and you're still struggling, yeah. in your mind, you should have no as an answer and keep following. Right. Now, of course, if it turns around, then you know, yeah. then you're back you know, in a good reality. Right. But I think that 30-day period to make a decision is, is the requirement is so many different things that are there. Uh, are they doing some CPs and you leave them CP condition precedents in there, then you can do it in 10 days, 5 days, right? Yeah. But then you struggle at the back of the 30 days. So it's all relative. Actually, there's a couple of factors here. One is you also as an entrepreneur need to, it's, it's all stage related. So if you're talking about mid-stage, early stage, let's assume for right now, we're not talking about our first, very first investor that we're getting money from. But let's say you're talking about a diversified group of investors that you're engaging. And our story, our first very, our very first investor was a VC, pure commercial investor. And as you all know, early stage entrepreneurs, we're kind of, kind of like, Let's just get this money, otherwise I'm going to go to business school and I have no idea what I'm going to do next, right? And so, you know, you kind of, you're, you're kind of accepting certain terms because they're like, look, 
this is standard, we do this for everyone, don't complain, who cares about equity that you're gonna get in the future if you don't have any value that you're creating today, we're gonna help you create the value. So you kind of accept it. The challenge comes in when you're going from that first early stage round to your next round of investors, and now suddenly you also recognize that the you know, impact investors that were risk averse to take you on in the first place are now finally latching on because you've proven something. And so, but now the terms are clashing because now they're like aggressive commercial terms and they're talking about impact and there's like an, there's this crazy clash that goes on. So that takes time. You can still get through that if you have a good relationship with your VC investor and letting them understand that, look, you're not the right kind of capital for my future. I'm not a hockey stick growth story. I need patient capital. These are good investors. Please mingle and get to know each other and make my life a lot easier. Like, stop making me the mid middle point and understand that you like me and you want me to succeed. So let's do this faster. And this is where like-minded investors come together and they come up with a great term sheet. But to the point that someone else made earlier, it's not, actually you did, Shabri, it's not then the term sheet. Then suddenly, five lawyers come in. And five lawyers all have very different opinions. So then we started clubbing, let's say, say who's gonna use their lawyer? Well, I as an entrepreneur certainly don't wanna pay for a lawyer, so let's have one of the impact investors come in because they'll probably structure this more fairly. But then you realize all impact investors use lawyers that also are outdated when it comes to Indian regulation. So next thing you know, you're spending what was simple term sheets in six days, like five months to create an agreement which is 90 to 120 pages. And you're kind of going, wait, why did that happen? I had a pretty clear cut agreement that took 50 pages earlier. You just have to build on this. But that's a new lawyer and that's a person who's trying to build their own image in like the sector of being the impact lawyer and it kills you. So it's not as simple as going, get a term sheet fast, get people aligned fast. It's this entire story. And then the question goes into, we can complain about the investors as much as we want, but it's where are we then stepping up and becoming more active or innovative? And because at the end of the day, we need the money in the bank account more than anyone else does. So then we start becoming pushy. We start thinking about new ways of structuring deals. I become a lawyer because I might as well also be a lawyer and an entrepreneur and everything else that I am. And you know, it becomes messy. So it is an ecosystem issue. But at the same time, I think that some of the things that some of the investors have been doing saying, let's join forces, let's communicate more is helpful. But I think that regulatory issues become a challenge. And the question is who's supposed to be responsible for then being more proactive to make it happen? Sorry. <laughs> so part of it is regulatory, but part of it is also an understanding of what is the deal. Actual deal is two pages long, right? I want to give you money, you want to take my money, you want to give a certain equity and we're done. The rest of it is exceptions. You're two founders. What happens if one of the founder leaves? Well, we didn't think about that. Well, do you want me to document it or leave it loosey goosey? Do you want a stock option plan or you don't? Well, if you want it, then you want to write it now or let's leave it for later. So you can do it in 30 days, but you want to think about these exceptions what if, is it up round or a down round? What do you want to do? So my point is yes, I mean you can simplify things and say okay let's just write a two page, but people like us, and I'm probably one of the oldest people in this room, so I can tell you that we've seen so many, so many different case studies and data points that later on it comes back to haunt you and you'll say, dang, I should have really written that down in the document, right? And so it's better that you're safer and, and rather than sorrier later. It doesn't mean that you need 16 lawyers or four lawyers and 120 days and all that, but I think the more mature you are, the more you'll see through some of those points and say that, yes, this makes sense, and therefore let's take time and discuss it now versus later. We yeah. need the equivalent of that. that with, again, I think there are, for early stage impact investors to be coming in uh, using a convertible instrument and talking about drag, for, for me, is yeah. uh, drag along rights. Right. Meaning. Take it off the table. You know, th there's certain things that I just think fit, some things don't. Obviously, that's personal and not everybody agrees, but it'd be great to come up with some sort of consensus. Ron, I wanted to ask you to comment. What, what are your thoughts on this, given that you have the number of transactions under your belt that you do? Well, I was going to comment on the, on the lawyers. I am a lawyer, so I, but I don't Oops. practice. <laughs> okay? But I, I think uh, people forget that the entrepreneur, uh, sorry, the investor is the client. And the investors that give uh, the lawyers the right to control the pace is a real problem. 
um, you know, they are the, and, and, and in most cases, the investor probably has enough deals so they know what really is going to happen. They maybe have some entrepreneurship background, uh, um, and they should be able to make a decision quickly or say, I'm not worried about that. Leave it out. But it's very easy to get hijacked by the professionals who don't know anything about. More often than not, most entrepreneurs are, do not really pay too much attention to it as, I mean, I, not to blame them or anything, it's just that they're so caught up in operations, this becomes a job of the most lowly paid executive during the process. But it all comes to haunt you when you're doing your investment, because that's where you cannot invest. Today, if you invest without the paperwork in place, you could get into problem, I mean, due to various compliances. And that that's actually takes away most of your time rather than the clauses in the agreement. We uh, have systematically tried to share due diligence. And for me, the sharing of the due diligence is not just a document that you then send on to the next guy who wants to, or girl who wants to look at a company. Uh, it's also then a lot of that engagement you were talking about. Uh, we actively, actively try to help every single one of our companies. When it, as soon as they have the next hook into the next person, and if we know them, we're trying to, 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 to share whatever sense we've derived from the uh, experience of, of being with this entrepreneur and then the documentation, of course. But um, this idea that due diligence um, is uh, proprietary, at least in this type of a, an ecosystem where there's this much fragmentation. I mean, we're all at San Calp, it's fantastic. Now we all know each other. And there's so many good friends amongst, uh, amongst us. And it, you know, there's, we have the social capital, I think, in place to do, to do much better. Um, there's, there's really no, I think, excuse, particularly if you're looking at somebody who's a little further down the channel from you, uh, to your point. Close your next rounds faster. I mean, I'm, I'm a great example of this, of what, what Audrey's mentioning, is that, you know, it's not just shared due diligence in a process when you're bringing in multiple investors so that you can do it faster, but it's also that the next time another investor comes in, you suddenly have this group of four or five investors that are not just sharing that due diligence, but they're essentially endorsing you. And so when that endorsement comes in, it you know if any investor is kind of on that curve of whether they should or not, that weird social capital pressure, with good one, actually gets them to close a deal. And I think that that's actually helped us in our journey of closing deals a lot faster. And I think it's it's actually one of the things that you guys have actually been most proactively innovative about. So. You had a point. Uh, I, I actually wanted to add a point on the previous uh, comment. So I, I think the fundamental problem about this Mars and Venus thing is the, the distrust that about this God and dog. You know? uh, I think it need not be that way. Uh, can the investor and entrepreneur relationship be on an equal term, both recognizing that the other is equally required? The money is required, the entrepreneur is required. If, if the entrepreneur was not required, the VC or investor could have run the enterprise by themselves. If the money was not required, the entrepreneur did not need the other side. So, can both sides recognize the importance of the other and then treat the other as equal? And therefore, when it comes to the terms that you know uh, protect uh, terms of protection, can the protection terms not outweigh the entire spirit of the the, the legal document? Was one point I wanted to ask. That's the whole point. <laughs> it should not be so. So I thought we'll just uh, you know wind back to. In fact, it came out as one of the comments uh, earlier about investor philosophy. Okay, now you all can go back to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, he wants to. He wants the investors and the entrepreneurs to get along. Come on, <laughs> that's not why we are here. Dark room is not the best way to do that. So, uh, you know, uh, there was a comment about uh, first of all not even understanding the where the investors coming from, the philosophy, and you know we put that down. So, Shabri, you just talked about you know being here a year back and meeting a number of investors, and to what extent do you think that was an issue for you to? In, in terms of your cycle of uh, you know fundraising, work, was it a serious block if at all? No, I think I think it was a very worthwhile time that I put in. I spent maybe three days, including the uh, two days for Sankal that I came. I had done some homework before and then shortlisted some 25. And I think that was time well spent for me uh, because I spent quality time only with the remaining five. Um, so in in terms of my overall cycle time, it was very small, but time well spent. 
brings up a really important point, which I think is, um, it's very easy for us as entrepreneurs to complain that, you know, investors are not reaching out to us or reacting or, you know, giving us what we need and we're creating impact and do they not understand? Um, but at the same time, you have the investors going, there are like no entrepreneurs out there to fund. You know, it's get us good entrepreneurs. And I think that there's, there's a misnomer on both of these concepts, right? I think it is the importance of an entrepreneur to do their homework. They should really understand that if you're going to a place where there's an investment forum, you don't want to mingle with all hundred people that are there. You should be doing research on what portfolios have they invested in the past. You know, what is their track record? Do they align with your vision or not? And it's usually available on a website, so it's really not that tough to figure out. But vice versa, I think that an investor then should also have that same responsibility of knowing that are they like seeking to meet X, Y, Z? If they don't care about energy access, why are they talking to me? You know, and it's, so there's, there's, there's an onus on both sides that come in. I think investors are tending to do it better because they have middlemen that are now helping them, whether that's called incubators or not. I don't think that entrepreneurs are doing as well of a job to actually get there. But at the same, at the same point, um, I also think that, um, you know, we, even if we did do our shortlisting, we're not necessarily philosophically aligned. We think we are because it, it's written. But you also know that there's a lot of impact investors today who are not focused. So they could have, you could see one portfolio investee of energy access, but it turns out they really like healthcare. So you're kind of asking like, why the hell did you invest in an energy access portfolio company? How is that aligned to what you're doing? So I think philo philosophy alignments in terms of communicating that better is something that's really hard for an entrepreneur to figure out until we actually meet you. So it's a challenge, right, in terms of really trying to figure this out. We're pretty straightforward. You know, we're an energy access company that does distribution. So is it easier for you all to come to us or us to come to you, and how do you kind of figure that out? A quick question that comes to mind is, from, from the entrepreneur standpoint, other than, other than the money, are they really looking for any value from the investors? or they just want the money and there. What do the entrepreneurs have to say to that? So now, why don't you answer that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it depends. I think it's, it's, and the entrepreneur should be clear about that. So right now, when I'm talking to investors, I am telling them that I'm looking for an investor that brings strategic value, and these are the areas that we need help with. So, and, and we're looking for an investor that'll take a board seat. And you know, I think it's important, it's on the entrepreneur to be clear about that. I think it's stage to stage, right? Early stage, you probably don't know what you need. And so early stage, you're just kind of trying to get money fast so you can do your work. But when you're starting to grow, I mean, like, I mean you can, I'm sure you can say this from your experience as well, that we were very picky about who we wanted to take money from. And we were very, we were asking other entrepreneurs who got invested by these organizations. We're doing our own kind of due diligence and understand are we the right fit? Because I was clear that I didn't just need money at this time. And this time I needed a different kind of so so I think it, it depends on stages. So the answer is sometimes only money, sometimes more, and sometimes you don't know. Sabri, what about you? What were you looking for? <coughs> so um, I was clear that I wanted a um, I, I was at least clear that I didn't want an armchair gyan giving investor. Um, because I, I find that there are quite a lot of them, and um, I wanted, I, I had said this, I mean, in, in that sense, uh, my meetings with Ankur were very uh, aligned, because they also said that they are going to be very hands-on, and then they're going to be actively helping, and it, it was only a case of uh, figuring out whether the, their help is going to be of what I really need, and then as soon as the match was felt, we could move forward. Ki, who who were, uh, were the investors earlier, now they have become the uh, entrepreneur. So they are understanding the framework of uh, what is the requirement these investors uh, really need from the entrepreneurs and accordingly they develop their business plan. So what is the reverse pitch? So that more entrepreneurs can come forward and they can have access to the uh, investors and so that more job creation can take place and uh, Skillvery is the very recent example and even when you told that uh, you had identified the 25 inter uh, investors and then you prioritized only 5. So what was the main reason behind that? That is one thing. And second, uh, Everybody uh, having the uh, investor background and then they are coming the entrepreneurs and what is the reverse pitch which I told. So how, how, this can really encourage more people to come forward and become entrepreneur. Thank you. Because very recently I tried to support from our mission Mart 
uh, which worked as enterprise support organization in encouraging the uh, uh, scale building, uh, uh, basically the raw material and uh, sanitary material suppliers to become sanitation entrepreneur. And we burned our hand. So th because of that reason also, I am looking forward to your input on this. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think if, um, I, I certainly think that uh, people who have had some kind of either an entrepreneurial experience or running operations of sales will be in a much better position to be identifying with you than someone who uh, may not have done that in their lives and have maybe more of a pure finance kind of uh, background. Um, second, uh, the, the, I mean, my filtering criteria may not apply to somebody else's filtering criteria. So I was clear about what business I was in. I am doing hardware. I am doing uh, hardware-based product development in vocational. So it's a slightly niche kind of market. So uh, those investors who are looking at very high ROI and very early exit uh, are certainly not going to be uh, the kind of people whom I should partner with. I needed some more patience from the investor. I needed maybe, you know, uh, the, um, the time to scale will be much uh, longer for a hardware product than for a app that can be downloaded a million times in one day. So um, I needed investors who would uh, appreciate that and stay put with me for that longer period of time.